Amen. Good morning, Tony Point Church. It's such a wonderful privilege to be with you. And I, I bring love to you from City Church in Charlotte and also to, to various people praying all over South Africa for you. And I, I also just wanted to honor your elders. We had some time with them last night and my heart was just overjoyed. Um, many, of, many of you are sitting in, in a lot of sacrifice and many of you have been sacrificing and other people are sitting in your sacrifice. And, um, you know, the scripture says that we, um, the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. And I can see Turning Point rejoicing and the city just benefiting from this beautiful church. So well done to you for being faithful. And um, I know that the Lord has been speaking to you about refreshing. And don't you already feel refreshed by the Holy Spirit yeah. this morning? Yeah. Holy Spirit is ministering to us already, and I, I really believe that, we believe that there's going to be a great release of His faith this morning in you. Yeah. And um, my good friend in, uh, uh, that's on the pastor, pastoral team in South Africa, she's, um, she quoted the scripture, to, she said, Proverbs 11, 25, this was her prayer for you, the generous will prosper, those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. And I know some of you heard that last week, uh, that the Lord wants to refresh you. So I, I just want to, to end with this, that um, the, Jesus ministered, and he said that um, to those who believe, that rivers of living water will flow from within them. And that as you receive in faith today the word the Lord has for you, and you step out, that the Holy Spirit will minister to you, and rivers of living water will flow. So bless you this morning. Thanks, my love. Wow. You see, you just, uh, I'm, I'm sorry that I've, I'm, I'm preaching this morning because, I mean, she's on fire. I just love, uh, who of the men can say amen if you're married up? Yeah. Right? Amen. I get some men. And if you didn't say amen, I'm sorry. You should have said amen. I gave you a chance there right now. <laughs> but the truth be told is it's a privilege to be able to be married to a woman of faith. And uh, Turning Point Church, I believe that God has called you for such a time as this. He's called you together together for such a time as this, amen? And I know that over the last two weeks, you've been speaking about evangelism, trusting God to reach the lost, right? But you know what I love about the disciples and I love about Jesus' uh, literally ministry on this planet is that every single disciple that walked with Jesus heard the call of Jesus. And he said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. And so I believe that becoming fishers of men, being, being someone that's being used by God in the marketplace, in the schools, when you're doing law enforcement or as you are leading your family or as you have friends, as you go to your kids' school, as you go to the baseball game, as you are making fish, uh, uh, as you are fishing for men, I'm here to say to you, Tom, that God is saying, follow me. He's calling you to follow him first. Amen? Jesus always says, come before he says, go. And he calls us to him. And then when we follow him, you know what? He makes us. He makes us. And so I'm so thankful that I don't have to make myself. I'm so thankful that I don't have to have the goods. And so even as, as I'm standing with you, in front of you today, I just wanna say that I'm dependent on the Holy Spirit because He wants to do something in our hearts. Is that right? So can, we, can all of us together come to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, teach us. My heart's ready to receive from you in Jesus' name. So I wanna talk to you this morning about living and walking in the call of God. Living and walking in the call of God. I'm here to say that I believe that we cannot do what God's called us to do if we don't understand that God's called us to do this. And I wanna live in the atmosphere of the call of God. I don't wanna go to work just because I wanna paycheck. I wanna go to work in the atmosphere of the call of God. I don't wanna pray with my kids in the morning just because this is the right thing to do. I wanna pray with them because I'm called to pray with my children, amen? I, I don't wanna love my wife. I don't wanna forgive someone that's hurt me just because it's the right thing to do. I wanna know that it's what God has called me to do. I don't wanna be involved in my local church. I don't wanna serve. If you're serving at Turning Point Church, I'm, I'm so thankful that you're serving. But I'm here to say to you, you can't do it for any other reason. The greatest reason is you do it because Jesus has called you to be in this local church. Is that right? And I'm based on that, I just wanna say, Tyron Daniel is praying for you guys. He's just sent me a text yesterday. So please send lots of love to Turning Point Church. So can we give God thanks for our team leader, Tyron Daniel. He just sends a lot of love. Him and Nicole blessing us. And so I'm very excited about what God is doing. But I wanna tell you about uh, what happened to me in 2014. I was standing in worship, and I love the worship in this church, standing in worship, and I was desperate. Who of you have ever been desperate? 
Uh, I love being desperate in the, in the, I don't enjoy it at the moment, but then afterwards I'm so thankful that I was desperate to Jesus. But so what happens, I'm standing in the, pre, I'm standing in the worship and they're singing that old song. You know that song that everyone loves, Oceans, you call me out upon the water, right? And then I'm like, I will call upon you. And I'm like, sorry, I can't sing as beautiful as Caleb, but anyway. <laughs> and, so, and so I'm standing there and I'm experiencing just such a desperation in my spirit. the next year. Our building fund was resurrected. We started, we quadrupled the amount of people serving in the church. The church exploded. We went from four months behind of our salary to money in the bank. Hello? And I'm so grateful today that I held on to the call of God. Nothing better. I just held on to the call of God. Amen? I'm here to say to you that no matter, no, every single person in the Bible that ever counted for God, they responded to the call of God on their lives. Samuel, remember Samuel? The Bible says not one of these words fell to the ground. And if you're a young person here today, you might be in your teens or in your 20s and you're saying, I'm, an actually, I'm a young person. Even in your 30s, you're saying, I'm too young to be used by God. God is saying to you today that you are called just like Samuel was called. And it's the call of God, young people. If you're young, you need the call of God on your life. Amen? You need the call of God on your life. Moses, maybe you're a little bit older. Moses gets to the prime of his life. He's at 40. He's got everything going for him and he takes things into his own hands and he becomes a murderer. And so he writes himself off. Society writes him off and he runs for his life, right? And at the age of 80, I'm thinking at 80, it's done. He's now working as a shepherd boy for, for a fa his father-in-law. He's kind of like doing a dead-end job. But yet, what happens is at the age of 80, he hears the call of God and he gets drawn to a burning bush and he responds to the call of God at 80. I'm here to say to you, if you're in this room and you're still breathing and you're not even 80 yet, I'm here to say God's not finished with you. Amen? Amen. Can you tell the person next to you, God's not done with you? Amen? The call of God. Maybe you're in business or maybe you're, in the prof you're, you're a professional, maybe you're in law enforcement. Maybe you're in teaching. I don't know what, what professional uh, pr profession you are and you're saying, but Mark, I'm not even employed at Turning Point. I, I'm, I'm not so privileged to be able to, I'm here to say to you, you're very privileged to be, to be in business. 
Aquila and Priscilla were called by God and they never ever became elders. We don't read about them being elders. We don't read about them being employed in a local church, but they planted churches, friends. Their house was a place of worship. Their, their, their business was a vessel for the kingdom of God. If you're in business or you're a professional, Tom, you can be, you are called by God like Aquila, Aquila and Priscilla. Now, if you're anything like me, and some, maybe there's some stubborn people in the room. Don't look, don't look to the person next to you. But I'm going to say that God even calls stubborn people. I said now God calls young people, God calls old people, God calls professional and business people, and he calls more, all sorts of people. But I'm here to say he also calls stubborn people. Because Jonah was stubborn. Hello. And if you're a little bit like me, sometimes I can be stubborn. And God's even going to call you. Amen. I want to live in the atmosphere of the call of God. Have you ever heard of a man called Eric Little? Who's, who's, who heard of the movie called Chariots of Fire? Okay, thank you. That might give away your age. I, sorry, Sergio, it's just you and me. It's just you and me. Right. So, so Eric Little was, was like the Olympic champ for the 100 meter dash. And what happened to him was he was, there's this whole thing about his relationship with God and he was a missionary to China. He actually grew up on the mission field and he was a Scottish Olympic athlete, one of the greatest. And so what he did was he felt, he felt like, People, it was like this tug of war. Is it more spiritual to be on the mission field or to be on the, the track field, to be a professional sports person? And he says, while he listened to this, listen to his testimony, he said, while I run, I sense the pleasure of God while I run. I experience the pleasure of God while I run. See, when you understand that you're called by God, then you're not having to be in a church building to experience the pleasure of God. Then you can be in a boardroom signing a, a document and you can experience the pleasure of God. You can go to a difficult meeting where you've got to discipline someone and you can experience the pleasure of God. You can sit at your dining room table with your kids and experience the pleasure of God. You don't have to wait for, for us to sing a song in church. You can experience the pleasure of God on your way to your meeting. Can you give God praise that he can, he can have the pleasure of God? Amen. So Marie and I, um, we moved here, as you know, 14 months ago. And uh, we, we just always knew we needed to be in America. Well, not always, but for a long time, we knew we needed to be in America. And we come here, and it's not easy. Any parents had kids? Easy? Anyone stayed married for longer than three weeks? <laughs> easy? Hello? Anyone start two services? Easy? It's not going to be easy. Sorry to say, guys. It's gonna be amazing, but it's not gonna be easy. Can I just prepare you right now? You, you're taking on more. So we come to America, we're like, hey man, it's a land of opportunity. Woo, woo. You know, like, okay. And I'm, friends, I come to this country and I'm like, I'm not seeing people getting saved. Where I come from, we saw between eight and 12 people saved every week. We baptized hundreds of people. We see people just minister. We see the presence of God, the power of God, the freedom. I come here to America and I'm not seeing much of that. And so guess what happens? I'm like, Lord, you gave me a scripture from Acts 16. That's why I'm here. You spoke to me about being here, but God gave Maria a scripture from Ezekiel chapter two saying you're gonna go to a stiff-necked people. And he says, I'm gonna make, you, make your, your, your face as, as hard as flint and I'm going to, you do not hold back, you speak. Now, the first six months that I was here, Caleb knows, I thought that Marie didn't hear God. It's amazing. But till about October last year, I was like, yo, Marie, bring that scripture. Because <laughs> I need to draw faith now. You know what? The only way you live in the call of God is you've got to have the word of God. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to God needs to believe that he exists and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I need to be a man and a woman. We need to be men and women of faith. And so what happens is I need a word from God in the midst of the difficult times. And so I'm in this country and I'm saying, God, speak to me. And God says, I've spoken to you. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by my word. Amen. The call of God goes beyond the fuzzy feelings. The call of God goes beyond the short-term, easy, quick fixes. I, had, I heard a message by a man called Nigel Day-Lewis. If you haven't heard of Nigel Day-Lewis, he, him and Melita moved to, to London Many years ago, planted an amazing church. Then they moved to, to, to Liverpool to lead a church. Now, they, now they're in York and they're leading a church in York. And Nigel Day Lewis preached this message. He says, will a man serve God for nothing? 
Will a man serve God for nothing? He was looking at the life of Job and he said, will you be obedient when there's no immediate return on your obedience? Will you stay faithful in your marriage when there's no quick fix? Will you stay faithful in your children and faithful to your parents when it's not easy? When you, when you get nothing out of it? Will you serve God for nothing? Turning point church, I wanna ask you, if you're called to be in this local church, to be planted here, will you serve God even if you get nothing? And you know what I love about God? You can never outgive Him. You'll always get something. But the motive is not God, God what's in it for me. The motive is God, have you called me? The motive is God, I wanna, I wanna obey you. I wanna obey you even if I can't see the fruit immediately. I wanna love people even if I don't get any love back from them. Will you serve God for nothing? I wanna pray, I wanna pray in this church. I wanna pray when it's prayer meeting time. I wanna, I wanna host, host a grow group. I wanna be part of my grow group, even if I get nothing immediately out of it. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And you know, God's not mocked because whatever you sow, you'll reap. God can, he's no man's data. He's faithful, he'll always come through. But friends, even if we don't immediately get it, will we keep on doing it? In six months time, when you're still doing two celebrations, and now you're serving hard and you're serving more, will you serve God because He's called you? Not because it's easy, not because you get an extra $100,000 in your bank account, but just because Jesus said. Amen. That couple there at the back, just a, a you sir with a John Deere. Do you mind standing? Just a, with the blonde, the two of you, do you mind standing? Sorry, are you guys, are you guys married, the two of you? Trinity, Debbie, are you married? What is your name? Levi. Levi and Trinity. Levi and Trinity, I just, honestly, as I see you, I see how, how God says, it's, you've humbled yourself and it's time for me to lift you up. The Bible says, those who humble themselves before the Lord will be lifted up. And I, and I, believe, I believe that God's saying, you are, you are pioneers, you are way makers. You are people that are called to blaze trails, not only for, for your children, but for others as well. And God's saying, you've said, no, but Lord, it's not me, it's others. Not me, Lord, I'm happy just to kind of go along. God's saying, those seasons of just going along, they're coming to an end, my friend. They're coming to an end. God is actually saying, he says, I've called you to set the tone. You're, you're, a, you're a pace setter. You're a pace setter. We, uh, Trinity, Trinity, I felt like, honestly, like the Lord saying, I see, I see how musical like, um, notes come out of your mouth. I feel like God's saying, you're not just someone that, that brings the fragrance of Christ, but you also bring something of the, of the sound of heaven. You bring, God's called you to bring the sound of heaven into every sphere where God's given you influence, Trinity. God's saying you're a, you're a woman, a vessel of the sound of heaven in Jesus' name. And as a couple, I see how God is just saying, I, I honestly feel like God's saying it's space. You're gonna make space. Make space, number one, for more of him, but also you're gonna make space for more of the people that God's calling you to in the mighty name of Jesus. I just wanna bless you today. And also, just wanna say, just, I, I, honestly, I feel like God's saying it's a time for supernatural provision. Supernatural provision. When I, whenever I come back, and I'm gonna ask Caleb, how's going with you? I believe that there's something gonna shift over provision over your life in Jesus' mighty name. I speak it over you in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Will a man serve God for nothing? I'm reminded of the Moravians. Have you ever heard of the Moravians? The Moravian, there's, a, there's an amazing movement. Um, these Moravians had prayed for 100 years, 24-7. They just prayed for 24-7. But it was started by a man called Count von Zinzendorf. And Count von Zinzendorf started this Moravian movement. And these Moravians were on fire for God. Like, I believe some of these on fire for God people here in Turning Point. I, I really believe there's some people here that are on fire for God. Can I get a witness? Amen. There's some people on fire. This is why this church is set up for, for the growth and what God wants, wants to do. But watch this. The Moravian movement was started by a man that was walking in an art gallery. And as he walked in the art gallery, he saw a painting of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ hanging on the cross. And as Jesus is hanging on the cross, at the bottom of the painting, it says, this is what I did for thee. What will thou do for me? I'm not serving God because I get something out of it. I serve God because he's given me so much. This is what I did for thee. What will thou do for me? And Count von Zinzendorf, that did not know God, fell on his knees in front of a painting in an art gallery. And he said, he said, he said God, I'll give my life to you because you've given your life for me. And you know what happened? He started a movement where they were planting churches and they were going to places to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. But so radical that they realized that they, 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 they were slaves that were serving on islands. 
And these slaves were, 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 were unreached people groups. They, were not, they did not know about Jesus. And the Moravians knew the only way that they would be able to preach the gospel to those slaves was to sell themselves into slavery. So they sold themselves into slavery because they had a freedom that was eternal, that wasn't temporary. And they sold themselves into slavery so that they could be tied to other slaves. And when you are bound to other slaves on the ship, you can preach to God. You've got a captive audience, literally. And they would preach the gospel to slaves, giving their lives up so that they can meet vessels of honor, live in the call of God. And what, what it was said about the Moravians is when they, were, when they were taken off on those ships and their families would go to the, the, the docking places to, to say goodbye to their, 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 their loved ones, what they would hear shouting at one another, this is what they would shout to one another. They would shout, may the lamb who was slain receive the reward of his suffering. May the lamb who was slain receive the reward of his suffering. I'm living in the call of God, not because I get something out of it, but because the lamb who was slain with my life, when I go to work with my life in my family, the lamb who was slain receives the reward for his suffering. He suffered for me, and that empowers me to live in the call of God. It's the lamb of, it's the lamb of God, amen. My prayer turning point is your next season is that, the, 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 that what would echo from your heart would be, May the lamb who was slain receive the reward of his suffering. When you do love that child and when you do go to work, when you do go the extra mile on Tuesday when no one else is and you go the extra mile, you say, Lord, I'm not doing this for man because I'm not working for men. I'm not working for a paycheck. I'm working for the glory of God, for the lamb who was slain. The call of God, friends, is at every level of our lives. We've got too many Christians thinking that the call of God happens on a Sunday morning at 9 a.m. and at 11 a.m. Call of God happens on Tuesday morning at 11 a.m. when you are sitting with a difficult situation at work or a difficult client. That's when the call of God kicks in. Amen? So five things that'll help you to walk in the call of God. Can I share five things with you that'll help you to walk in the call of God? How do we practically Walk in the call of God. How do I live in the call of God? So firstly, and I love what Cindy was saying, this is a powerful prophetic word. Friends, without the presence of God, you can't walk in the call of God. The call of God is lived out in the presence of God. So of all five of these things I'm gonna share with you are things that happen in the presence of God. It's from the place of the presence of God that we walk in the call of God, right? Adam, the Bible says, walked with God in the cool of the day. He walked with God. Right? Moses says in Exodus 33, he says, he says, if your presence don't go with me, do not take us up from here. Linda shared it in our pre, 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 prayer meeting. It's so powerful, Linda, just how God speaks to us. He's saying, listen, I want you to live in my presence. Have you ever heard of Brother Lawrence? Brother Lawrence tells a story about how he learned how to practice the presence of God. If you can, that's my favorite book on the planet, the pr Practicing the Presence of God. Have you read that book? It's a short book. It's a nice book for people like me that I'm, I'm a slow reader. So, Hello, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just having some fun. It's, <laughs> Brother Lawrence says this. He says he learned how to, even while he's washing the dishes, <sighs> experience the presence of God. And from the place of the presence of God, these five things are necessary. Number one, you need to hear the voice of God need to hear the voice of God. If you wanna live in the call of God, hear the voice of God. The voice of God is in the presence of God. And the presence of God is in the worship of God. And so when I worship God, when I do everything for His glory, the presence of God is in my midst because the Bible says God inhabits the praises of His people. So when I live for His glory, when I say the Lamb who was slain, let He receive the reward of His suffering, I live for the glory of God. I give Him worship and in the presence of God, I hear the voice of God, amen? 1 Samuel chapter 23. Now, David was a classic example of someone that lived listening to the voice of God. I love this. He says, he says in, in 1 Samuel 23 verse four, once again, can you say once again? David inquired of the Lord and the Lord answered him. Isn't that amazing? That God says, call to me and I'll answer you, Jeremiah 33, three. He says, you need to listen to me, listen to my voice, Hear my voice. David had a lifestyle of inquiring from God. In 1 Samuel 30, it looks like he's at the end of his rope. And what does he do? He says, get me an ephod. I want to hear God. Every single time he goes into the battlefield, what does David do? He hears God. Just because it worked yesterday like that, I'm not going to just copy and paste from yesterday. Let me hear God again. Yeah. Let me hear God again. Can you say again? 
God speaks to us when we hear him again. God says, go down to Kayla, for I'm going to give the Philistines into your hand. I believe God's calling us, we sang it, out of shadows into hearing his voice. Out of fear, because you know, when we hear God's voice, truth, faith fills our hearts and we don't have to be in fear. Out of smallness, if you've just been small, if the enemy's trying to shrink you, you need to hear his voice. James says, he says, do not say tomorrow we're gonna do this and for a year we're gonna do business there and then we're gonna go there. He says, no, instead you should be saying, if it is the Lord's will, we will do this. Amen? You wanna live in the call of God? You need to hear the voice of God. Second thing, if you out of the, in the presence of God, the second thing we do in the presence of God is we look for the glory of God. If you wanna live in the, glory, the call of God, you need to seek the glory of God. I've, I've only started doing this in the last few years and it's changed my life because Moses was a man that seeked God's presence, but he was a man that wanted God's glory, right? I love the glory of God. I'm learning that the glory of God, God, every, every time God shows up, God's presence and God's glory go, go together. God, he says, let your light so shine before men, Matthew 5, 16, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. I believe that God has designed us, he's called us for glory, in Jesus' name, amen. Exodus 33, verse 17 to 18 says, and the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you've asked because I'm pleased with you and I know you by name. You wanna live in the call of God? Understand the presence of God, listen to his voice. He's pleased with you, he knows you by name. What, how does Moses respond? Not, not like, okay God, that's enough because it's a lot already, but he's saying, he's saying, now show me your glory. Do you see that in the scripture? Then show me your glorious presence. Another translation says, now show me your glory. I love this about Moses. The Bible says Moses came down from the mountain. They had to put a veil in front of his eyes, right? Remember that? Because he shone with glory so powerfully. I wanna experience the glory of God. Friends, I, 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 I wanna hide myself. You know what Moses had to do? He had to hide himself in the cleft of the rock so that the glory of God could pass and he could see God. He could see God's, a glimpse of God. He couldn't see God's face but he spoke to God as a man would speak face to face with a friend. Isn't that amazing? Show me your glory. Friends, what we do every single day, you wanna live in the call of God? Hide yourself in Jesus Christ, the rock of all ages, the cleft of the rock. Hide yourself in, Je in Jesus and you know what? Experience his glory. We need to be people of the, of the glory of God. We can't be people just of, of the flesh. We need to be people of the glory, amen? So much better. You know, that's the Old Covenant. The Old Testament was a veiled face. The New Testament, we're gonna get there now, 2 Corinthians 3, with unveiled faces, we behold him. And we are transformed with ever increasing, transformed into, into, from glory to glory. Ever increasing glory, amen? So how do we do that? Firstly, I said, hear the voice of God. Secondly, the glory of God. The way that we experience, we keep on growing, is we turn to God. Can you say Turn. I love this, is that the Bible doesn't say we turn from. The Bible says we turn to. I love that. Hello. We turn to God. Dudley Daniel used to say, it's not what you get saved out of that's important, it's what you get saved into that's important, right? Who do I turn to? Friends, you know what, Tom, what we often do is, is we all are like, stop doing this, stop doing that. I mean, if I wanna live in the call of God, I must stop sinning, I must stop doing this, I must stop looking, I must stop talking. No, friends, you must stop all of that stuff, but the way to stop is to turn to something that's better. To turn to someone, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full into his wonderful face, then the things of the earth grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Amen? Come on. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse 16 says, but whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Hello? When you turn, no more veil. When you turn, no more veil. Now the Lord is, spirit, is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Tyron has taught us well, there's liberty, there's freedom. That's why you live out the call of God in freedom, because the Spirit of God is working in your life. He says, and we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into His image with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Do you wanna be transformed? You can't transform yourself. You can't wake up every morning saying, I must do better. Oh, I need to be a better husband. I need to be a better father. I need to be a better mother. 
you know, I'm going to be a better teacher, a better employee, a better boss. No, no, you're not going to get yourself, you can't transform yourself. Stop trying to fix you because you can't fix you. What you need to do is you need to turn. And when you turn to him and you behold him, guess what happens? You behold him and guess what happens? What you behold is what you become. So when you see him, you become like him. When you experience his glory, you are filled with glory. And the Bible says in in Psalm 80, he says he crowns us with glory and honor. It's not our glory, it's his glory. And what do we do with that glory? Revelation 4 says we cast those crowns. So we say to you belong the glory, to you belong the honor and the praise. Why life is all about your glory. And as I behold you, I'm filled with my glory. My marriage gets filled with glory. My my workplace gets filled with glory. My my, my thought life gets filled with glory. My children get filled with glory. My life is 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 a place of the glory of God. I'm sorry, I'm excited. I mean, I'm a spitting in everybody. (laughs) Acts 3.19 says, repent then. Do you know repentance? It's such a bad word these days, but it's a brilliant word. It's a beautiful word. It's a freedom word. It's a glory word. You know why? Because repentance has got two meanings. Number one, metanoia, the Greek word, to change the way you think. But number two, who have you ever been to a penthouse? I've been to a penthouse. It's a, like a, those days, it was like a, like I think at that point in time, equivalent, like a five million dollar penthouse. It's the highest place of the building. It's the highest. It's the best place of the building. It's like a forty-story hotel, and you stay on the penthouse, right? Well, you listen to the word repent. Repent. Go from the basement to the penthouse. Go back to your heavenly calling. Go back to the highest place that God has called you from. That's repentance. Repent then. What does it mean to repent? To turn to God. You turn to God when you repent. Let your sins be washed out, the things that you've been struggling with. Let those sins be taken away. Then it says this, and times of refreshing can come in the presence of the Lord. I love that, the presence of God. Where do we find refreshing? In the presence of God. How do we find refreshing? We turn to God. Amen. Amen. People are so focused on what they're turning from, we should be turning to. Amen. The last two I wanna share with you, this this one is huge. If you wanna walk out the call of God, you've turned to Him, you've experienced His glory, you're listening to His voice, you wanna walk out the call of God, embrace His yoke. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. It says in, it says in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28, verse, 30, uh, verse th- 28 to 30, it says, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for yourself. Can you say rest? I love this. He says, you'll find rest for yourself. For you, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You're gonna go into two services, two celebrations. You know what's gonna happen? God's gonna give you his yoke. Please don't put on Saul's armor. Please don't try and become someone else. Please don't try and be a church down the road or the one that you saw on YouTube. Please don't. Please don't try and be that one's wife, that guy's wife. Please don't. Ladies, really, your nails are nice already. You don't have to be like her. I'm being serious. Uh Uh-oh. Maybe they're not nice. Maybe, I don't know, but... (laughs) Just be yourself. Just, David puts on Saul's armor. He's trying to be someone else. He's trying to put on stuff on him that God hasn't called him to carry. Amen? Take his yoke. Oh man, his yoke is, it's still responsibility. It's still a yoke. It's still, I come to serve. It's still, yes, I pray. Yes, I read my Bible. Yes, I obey. It's still responsibility. But his yoke is easy. His burden is light. You know, there's that scripture that says, blessed are the poor in spirit. Another way to explain that is, I've heard, I've heard a translation that says, blessed are those who know how dependent they are on God. You wanna live out the call of God? Grow in your dependence upon Jesus. Put his yoke upon you, amen? I feel, even as I'm preaching here today, I know in Mark Bailey, I've got nothing to give you. I'm sorry. In myself, nothing, but in him, everything. Right now, I've got faith. I can give you heaven's treasures and it's got nothing to do with me. 
And tomorrow when you're at work, you can bring them heaven's treasures and it's got nothing to do with you. And this afternoon when you have lunch with your family, give them heaven's treasures. It's got nothing to do with you. Amazing. Sorry, this couple uh, with a cap. Yes. Are you guys married? Please stand quickly, if you don't mind. Chris and? Carissa and? Santana. Santana and Carissa. Santana and Carissa. Wow. You know what? Honestly, I just see you digging a pool, the two of you. I don't know. I've never dug a pool, but I, I know that's a, it's a spiritual picture. But the picture that I see is I feel like God is saying God is wanting to make you and your family a place of rest and a place of refreshing, like an oasis. I feel like God has called you to create spaces of the life of God, the presence of God, and like an oasis. But I feel like God is saying your marriage needs to be an oasis. He's called your marriage to be an oasis, a place where you find peace and joy. And I see, I see how this place of refreshing, I feel like how the glory of God fills this place. Just like the glory of God filled the temple, God is saying, I wanna fill your home with my glory in Jesus' name. And Santana, I feel like God is saying, actually, I see you with hands and I feel like there's been some fingers taken off you. It's like you were limited in your grip, in your business world. There was like a limit of your grip. And you were saying, Lord, I need a bigger, better grip in my workplace. I, it feels like I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with like three fingers and I actually need 10 fingers. And God's saying, I'm restoring you today. If you don't mind just looking at your hands. I'm restoring you today, Santana. I'm gonna give you a greater hold on what I've called you for in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. And, and I, just, I just see a shift. I see a shift for you, Carissa. I feel like, I feel like there's, um, I honestly feel like God's saying, I'm giving you wings. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. You've been saying, Lord, I'm weak. God's saying, I'm giving you fresh new strength. You're gonna mount up on wings like eagles. I see how the Lord's saying, the storms that you've experienced, Carissa, God's saying, you're rising above the storms, my daughter. He's saying, I wanna, I wanna shine upon you. God, I just see the glory of God, just the life of God, the, the sun of righteousness is shining upon you, Carissa. God's saying, I've chosen you. Just don't listen to what the storms have come. The storms have just literally just come to destroy. It's been dark. God's saying, it's time for new light. It's time for new life. And you're gonna soar on wings like eagles in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's speak that over them. Bless you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. And then, and then you, sir, um, with the glasses. Yes, are you guys married? Please stand, please stand. What is your name, sir? Steve and? Stephanie. Steve and Stephanie. Awesome. I just, I don't know what, what it's like, but I just feel like God is saying, um, it's, it's, it's double portion. I don't know, I just see double portion. I feel like, uh, um, you know that old saying, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. I feel like for you guys as a couple, you've been taking these baby steps. So this has been small steps, one step, but you're in the right direction, but little steps. And you're saying, God, but the progress is slow. God is saying it's time to double up, double up the progress, Steve. God's saying, I'm enlarging your reach. I'm enlarging the, the growth. I feel like the growth is gonna accelerate over the next while of your life. There's leadership upon you, both of you. Uh, it's Steve and Stephanie. Stephanie, there's a leadership anointing upon your life. I don't know why. I don't, are you like, but me? God's saying, just like Samuel, I'm calling you just like Moses, I'm calling you, Stephanie. God's saying there's a leadership anointing upon your life. Don't, don't wait for someone to give you the, the response. It's just about influence. And Steve, I just see how God's saying, I'm, give, I'm giving you, I feel like, the, I'm still with that steps. I feel like God's saying, it's time to be front-footed. It's time to be on the front foot. The season, Steve, of being on the back foot is coming to an end. I feel like God's saying, it's time to be on the front. I sense like there's such a prophetic gifting upon your life, but you've been saying, Okay, Lord, when and how? And, but I feel like the Lord's saying, I'm gonna start speaking to you in the middle of the night. Don't, don't despise little words. Don't despise dreams. When I, when I give you revelations, God's saying you're a man of revelation. I've called you to be a man of revelation, Steve, in Jesus' mighty name. And now, Father, I just pray, pray today to this, this couple that your leadership mantle will just release upon their life. And God, I thank you for front-footedness. And I, God, I also wanna just thank you for sensitivity to your spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you guys. Bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, what's your name again? What's your cousin's name? Sorry, Caleb. Gina. Gina, honestly, do you mind just, uh, Gina, honestly, as you were standing here, uh, your, your, your aunt told me that you were busy recording stuff. And I saw you dancing. And I was like, where is Gina the whole time? I'm like, where is she? 
God gave me a word for you. He said this to me. He said to me, you've been hidden and I'm going to take the veil off. Moses had to put a veil upon his, and the glory of God had to be covered because the people around him couldn't handle the glory of God. God is saying, the way I'm gonna give you, let you shine would be, would be impactful, but yet people are gonna start accepting the glory of God in your life. It's like you, you don't have to hide it anymore. And God is saying, it's not about being anything different. It's just about being real. It's about being who you call to be, Gina. And I, I sense like there's an uncovering. I feel like, you know, when you've got this amazing painting and it's covered and then there's this unveiling, I feel like you're going into a season of unveiling, Gina. God, and God showed it to me while you were here. I said, hey man, last time she led worship and now she's singing there like a going smile, smile. And then, and the Lord said this to me. He said, I'm unveiling you. I'm taking you out of the shadows and I'm bringing you into something of a spacious place in Jesus' name. And Gina, I also wanted to say this. I feel like God is saying, I've prepared, honestly, I, I mean, I'm submitting this to you, but I feel like God is saying, be very careful who you partner with. Be very discerning who you partner with. This is a safe house and there's good leaders here. I feel like these leadership, for this leadership team, I feel like God is saying, partner with this eldership team. Be very careful who you partner with, life partner, who you partner with in business, who you partner with in friendship, be careful. Show me your friends, I'll prophesy your future. God's saying, it's a time to choose wisely in Jesus' mighty name. I speak that over you in Jesus' name, amen. Because my yoke is easy, says Jesus, and my burden is light. The last point I wanna share with you, it's very personal. How do we live and walk in the call of God? We need to learn how to accept our weaknesses. You're looking at someone that despises my weaknesses because I like being front-footed, strong, ready to go, always got an answer for everything. I'm like, oh, step, we're gonna make, a, we'll make it work, man. Anyone relate? Moms, you always have it all in control, like the whole family, you got it all there. Dads, you can always pay the bills, right? Don't we do that sometimes to ourselves? We've got all the plans, I've always got, and then what about my weakness? And you know what I've learned? What I don't like about my weakness is I hide my weakness. I don't talk about my weakness, and I sometimes act like I don't have any weaknesses. You know what I'm talking about? Don't look at me holy. You know exactly what I'm talking about. We all have weaknesses, right? You know what God said to me? He said, it's time to accept your weakness. If you wanna walk in the call of God, you can't walk in the call of God if you think that you, you don't need Jesus. Paul actually says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse nine. He says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. Paul saying, God, I'm so weak. I've got this thorn in my flesh. I, don't, I feel like, Lord, can you not just make me perfect? Can I not just be the best in, at everything? Can't I just be amazing? God says, no, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And Paul says, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly, gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. Who wants Christ's power on their life? If you want his power, you need to stop resting on your power. If you want his grace, you need to stop trusting in your grace. If you want his presence, you need to stop trusting in your presence. And so when I'm weak, that's when I'm strong. When I don't know what to pray, that's when he helps me to pray. When I don't understand the Bible, then his spirit leads and guides me in truth, all truth. When I don't know how to forgive, then he empowers me to forgive. When I don't know how to be a witness at work, then he gives me the grace to, to be a witness. When I don't know how to invite that person to next Sunday because we're gonna have two celebrations, there's this space next to me, then he gives me the grace to do that. Amen? And I'm praying for sick people and I think I'm the bee's knees and I, come on here, yeah, let me just, hallelujah, let me just give that anointed prayer. I'm telling you, there's no power but when I know how much I need him and I know how weak I am without him, that's when his power rests heavily upon me. You wanna walk in the call of God? In his presence, hear his voice. 
in his presence. Welcome his glory, seek his glory. In his presence, turn to him. In his presence, take his yoke upon you. Come to him for his yoke. In his presence, be happy about your weakness. Okay, God, I'm gonna boast in my weakness because when I'm weak, that's when I'm strong. Can you stand with me? I'd like to pray for us. It's an old story that I heard about a little shepherd boy that um, he was illiterate, so he couldn't read the Bible. And you know what happened? He was not only illiterate, but he was also struggled to hear. So he had a hearing, uh, like a challenge here with his hearing. And so what this shepherd boy did, he was shepherding, and these two missionaries came to this farm where he was shepherding, and it was on the, I think it was in the hills of Scotland, I don't know exactly where, but it would snow in the winter. And so what happened is the only way they could teach him was they thought, if this is a shepherd boy, he would understand. And so only taught him these five words, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. That's all he understood. But when he came to the fourth finger, they always said to him, hold this finger tightly. Because you need to know that he's not just the shepherd. He's not just someone else's shepherd. He's your personal shepherd. And if you want to walk in the call of God, you need to know that God is with you and that he is my shepherd. He's not only my he's not only Caleb and Jen's shepherd. He's not only my neighbor's shepherd, he's my shepherd personally. And a few years later, one of the missionaries went past that farm again and asked for the little boy and said, where is he? And they said, no, the previous winter, actually, there was a heavy snow and he got caught in a snowstorm and he died. And when they found his body under the snow, they said it was quite weird. We didn't know what it means, but he was holding his fourth finger. And in his darkest and most toughest time, in his toughest moment, he was holding the fourth finger. Why? Because he understood, no matter what I go through, the Lord is my, my shepherd. You're going to walk in the call of God, Turning Point Church. Know this, the Lord is with you. He anoints your head with oil. Your cup overflows. I want us to have a moment with the Holy Spirit right now. Do you mind? I don't know if you want to put your hand on your chest or you want to hold the finger, whatever you want to do, just in the presence of God. Maybe close your eyes for a few seconds. We're going to respond in worship. I believe there's a deep work that the Holy Spirit wants to do right now in your life. And I want to ask you to pause. Don't, don't miss this moment. It's a, it's a key moment in the presence of Jesus. The Lord is my, my shepherd. I want to ask you to allow the Holy Spirit to speak into your heart right now. Will you listen to him? Say, Lord, speak to me. Call me by name like you called Samuel three times. Samuel, call me by name. Lord, I want to hear you call my name. Maybe you say, but Lord, I want you to fill my house with glory. I want you to fill my life, my workplace, my thought life. Fill it with glory. Fill my relationships with glory. Fill my serving here at church with glory. Maybe you're saying, God, I've been focusing on a lot of things and I need to turn back to you, Jesus. I want to behold you so that I can become like you, be transformed into your image and likeness. Maybe you're saying, Jesus, I need to shake off Saul's armor, shake off burdens and yokes. It's not mine to carry. I want to come and find rest as I take on your yoke. And maybe you want to bring your weaknesses to Jesus and say, Lord, I'm weak. Be strong through me. Let the Lord be your shepherd today. And if you're standing here this morning and you do not have a relationship with Jesus, you've been far from God, and you walked into this room disconnected from Jesus, disconnected from the grace of God, and this morning, before we sing this song and we respond in, in worship and we allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us, I want to ask you, if you want me to pray for you right now, just there in your, where you stand, I want to pray for you right there where you stand. If you want to commit your life to Christ, you want to turn your back on sin, and you want to become a follower of Jesus, just put your hand up high for me right now. I want to pray for you today. If you want to become a follower of Jesus, thank you. Is there anyone else? Thank you, Jesus. Let's give God praise. Thank you, Lord. Is there anyone else that wants to become a follower of Jesus today? Just put your hand up. Thank you, my friend. Thank you so much. Let's give God thanks. Thank you, my friend. One more time, is there anyone else that wants to say, put, put my hand up, I'm going to become a follower of Jesus. Just quickly put your hand up. 
right now, this is a big moment for you and Jesus. The Lord's not only going to be this shepherd, He's going to today become your shepherd. So put your hand up right now. Jesus, and friends, can we lead these guys in a prayer? Just pray right now. If you, can, if you put your hand up, pray this with us. Can we pray this Lord, out loud? Lord Jesus, thank you that you died on the cross for me. Become my shepherd. Save me. Set me free. I'm yours, Jesus. I want to follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. I turn from everything that distracts. I turn my heart to you. Fill me with your spirit. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Friends, for the rest of us, do you mind just opening your hands in front of you? Just for a few seconds. Holy Spirit, come and have your way. 